Now on to ice tables. Ice tables are a means of problem solving by which we can determine a whole bunch of things on equilibrium type problems and reactions. We could determine initial concentrations, equilibrium concentrations, KEQs, all kinds of stuff. This is really just a method of problem solving. <clears throat> ice tables stands for initial change and equilibrium. So we're going to set up a table of these concentrations for a given situation. So here's our example reaction, an acid decomposing into hydrogen and its conjugate base, the conjugate base of the acid. Hydrogen doesn't exist in a solution, so it lines up with the water to make that hydronium. Hopefully you remember that from our acid base section. <clears throat> But we're going to set up a table, I'll do it in a different color so you can see it, making each of these their own section. So we've got the plus and the arrow. And so again, this stands for initial, I for initial, C for change. And E, oops, and E for equilibrium. And we're going to try to figure out the concentrations of all of these different boxes. What goes in there? So this particular problem is something I'm pulling from another paper, and it tells you that the initial concentration of your acid, when you put it in there, is 0 0.65 molar and at equilibrium we measure and find that it's 2.5 molar and it asks us to fill in the rest. That's a whole lot of blanks but let's stop and think about what each of these little blanks means. Let's start here. Initial equilibrium. So we start here, we end here. How much did we change from here to here? Did my concentration go up or down? Well, if you think about your reaction, we're moving from reactants to products. So we would expect this number to go down. And indeed it does. So my change was negative. We are going down. But how much? Looks like 0. Point, subtract 4. Hopefully you see how I got that number. I just subtracted these two. So if I take 0. 0.4 and I subtract it from 0. 0.65, I get 0.25. So we have changed 0.4 between here and here. Let's fill in some other boxes. If we think about the reaction starting, initially I have no products. All I have are reactants. I haven't said go yet. So both of these concentrations are zero. Nothing there yet. But those concentrations are going to change. These are products. We are making products. So these two will in fact go up by how much you say? Well the change is going to be a sa the same across the board. The only difference comes in when you have some kind of coefficient up here. That would be the factor by which you would multiply your change. So in this case I have a factor of 1 times my 0.4 change. Here same deal, factor of 1 times my 0.4 change, so that's a change of 0.4. So 0 plus 0.4 gives me 0 0.4. 0 plus 0.4 gives me 0 0.4. So now I could even calculate the KEQ. KEQ, if you remember, is products over reactants products over reactants. Let's plug in our numbers. 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 2.5, punch that into my calculator, gives me a K of 0.64. Look at that. Let's look at one in problem form. Ammonia reacts with water to form ammonium and the hydrogen ion. 
If the initial concentration of NH3 is 0.35 molar and the concentration at equilibrium is 0.325, what is the KEQ for this reaction? So I know I'm going to need ice tables because they only gave me one concentration at equilibrium. I need everybody's concentration at equilibrium. So let's start by setting up our table. It tells me that ammonia, NH3, reacts with water, H2O, to form ammonium and the, oh, that's a typo. It should say hydroxide ion. I apologize. Now, before we go on, let's stop and think for just a moment. Ammonia is usually a gas or some kind of aqueous solution. So that one affects equilibrium. We're good to go. Water, on the other hand, is a pure liquid. We know that liquids do not go in the equation and thus do not affect our KEQ. So we don't even need that piece. These are both ions which can be found in solution. Set up our ice table. Since we know we're looking for concentrations, this one we don't need. Let's fill in what we know. We have the initial concentration of ammonia. Always double check that this is in fact a concentration. If it's not, you got to do the math. But here, they gave it to me in molarity. I'm good to go. They also gave me, so that was my initial concentration, they also gave me my equilibrium concentration. They asked me for the KEQ. Well, that means I need these two boxes here. But I can't just jump to there. We've got a little math to do first. <clears throat> Easiest thing for us to start off with, since we have a, in our initial situation, we have reactant, no product. So these are both zeros. Now let's hop over here to my change. My reactant concentration will go down by how much you ask. 1.10, and that's achieved by just subtracting these two numbers, filling in the, the math, so to speak. So 0.35 minus 0.1, oh, oh my goodness, I can't even add, I can't even subtract. Point oh two five. man, I'm dumb today. You might say, well, why don't you just redo the video? Well, first off, I think it's important for you to see me mess up and how I handle those mistakes. Um, secondly, I think the videos are more important than perfection. All right, 0 0.025, subtract these two numbers. Our changes on our product side are going to go up by how much you ask. Y.025 times whatever factor we've got. One. One. Finish out the math. And now we can find our KEQ. KEQ equals products. Divided by reactants. The only reactant we care about is our ammonia because water, pure liquid, does not go in a K. So 0 0.025 times 0 0.025 divided by 0 0.325 0 0.0019 for my KEQ. We've got time for maybe one more problem. Ammonium hydroxide decomposes into ammonia and water. What's the concentration of ammonia if the KEQ is 1.5 times 10 to the fifth? Ah, so this one's a little bit different. Let's start it off the same. Ammonium hydroxide is decomposing to produce ammonia and water.
water. And just for the record, this actually is a real reaction. It does do this. We want to know the concentration at equilibrium. <clears throat> but they didn't give me a whole lot. So let's see what we got. Water is a liquid, so I don't need this column. Tells me that 0.2 moles decomposes, so I don't have any of this to start. And they give me my KEQ, and that's it. My goodness, that's not much. So since I don't know much, we're going to do algebra and just use it as x's. So my change for reactants, I know that my change goes down. By how much, I really don't know. So I'm just going to call it x. No factor in front here, so there's a 1 in front of my x here. That means at equilibrium, my concentration is going to be 0.2 minus x, whatever that change is. Ammonia, on the other hand, is going to go up by x. So my equilibrium concentration will be x. In order to figure out these concentrations, I need to know what x is. Luckily, this gives me enough information. I know that my KEQ is going to be my products over my reactants. So now, I can plug in all my algebraic stuff. My NH3 has a value now, my NH4OH does, and so does my KEQ. So let's plug all of that nonsense in. My KEQ equals this divided by this. All right, let's see if we can get those x's together. 1.5 times 10 to the 5th times 0.2 minus x equals x. So I multiplied this over. 1.5 times 10 to the 5th times 0.2 gives us 3 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4th minus 1.5 times 10 to the 5th x equals x. What do you say we get both of these x's on the same side? So we're going to add 1.5 times 10 to the 5th x on both sides. So that's 1x plus 1.5 times 10 to the 5th x. <laughs> so, sorry, I ran out of space at the bottom of my paper here. So up to here. Gives me 3 times 10 to the 4th equals... Okay, divide both sides. So 3 times 10 to the 4th divided by that number gives me 0 0.1 whew, and a whole bunch of 9. So we're just going to do 0 0.2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh my goodness, that was some fun algebra. So, this is not my answer. They asked me for the concentration of ammonia. This goes here. So, you would plug in your X back into your ice table to get your final answer for this one. Now, for us, this is the answer, because there's no other factors here for me to multiply that x by. Just this. So this is my molarity of an H3. If they gave you a volume, you could even find moles or grams of that. 
but this is your introduction to ice tables. In later videos, I will put up a couple of more examples on working these because they are tricky, particularly when you're not sure when to use ice tables and when not. But best of luck in attempting these. Uh, and again, look for some more practice examples later. Practice makes permanent. So make sure to double check your work.